Hello everyone, welcome to this special video. We will talk about a lot of cameras today. All right, so back in the days, you know, people used to do ambrotypes, daguerreotypes, tin types for using big boxy cameras, but even before, they were not even cameras. Optics was not even existing. What did we had? We had pinholes, right? What is a pinhole? A pinhole is a really, really tiny, I don't know if you can see it in the middle here. Uh, maybe not. It's a really, really tiny hole. And light goes through that hole into an empty box with a film in the back. That's a camera. You can turn any object into a pinhole, really, even a potato. Someone did it. So, of course, evolution came, you know. We had some really nice cameras, like this one. Uh, press cameras. A lot of accessories, a lot of ways to do the focus, like scale focus on this side, range finder on this side, even a sports finder like this, right? Um many accessories these were and are still great to use uh, with uh, quite a lot of, of quality and for sorry i have to put this back for ah yeah like this been a while so for a large format camera they come in pretty tiny really fun all right after that what do we have we have box cameras box cameras Eh, expensive? No, not expensive. Actually, companies were giving these for just a few bucks. And they've made a lot of money with the film, right? Um, and, uh, yeah, optical quality, not that great. There were viewfinder cameras. Viewfinder, as the name says about it, it's basically they have a viewfinder, right? Nothing attached to the lens, you know, but you can have a way of knowing what you're framing. Better than these kind of crappy viewfinder on the top or on the side, depending if you're shooting, you know, uh, uh, landscape or portraits. Uh, exactly the same. So this is another viewfinder camera. And you'll notice the viewfinder on this one is horizontal because... It was meant to shoot horizontal pictures because it is a half frame, right? So instead of a 24 by 36, you have half of it. So on a, let's say, 24 frame roll, you could do 48. On a 36, you could do 72. Nice. But the quality was, eh, okay, you know. After that, of course, after the viewfinders, we had uh, some folders, cam folding cameras. Right? These were nice, much more compact, much better than the box camera optically, at least the one made in Germany, in Japan as well. And uh, it was a bit uh, still difficult to make the focus at some point. And uh, these kind of, you know, finders on the top, you could either shoot like this or you twist it like that and you could shoot this way. Pretty fun. Really some of the lightest medium format cameras out there, folders. Some folders do have range finders on them. That makes a great, um, great add-on to one of these folder cameras. Speaking of which, range finder cameras. Now, range finder cameras, uh, they're amazing. Right? The way you, you make the focus with, with one of these, uh, I had many Leica's. Uh, if you want a cheap bargain, Canon piece, pretty good. It's not a Leica, but um, it's pretty darn good. Uh, after that, what we had? We had TLRs, Twin Lens Reflex. So these beasts had two lenses. One to take the actual picture, the taking lens, and one to view and to, the, you know, for the viewfinder on top. Uh, some of these add accessories like Mamiya C uh, series, uh, 
different uh, modules you could add and remove and had the bellow. Uh, there's a lot of nice cameras. Uh, Rolleiflex, you know, probably the best ones, but quite expensive. This Yashica A is really simple. It works. Uh, focus. Focus is okay, but uh, with a TLR, you, 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 you have to get accustomed to it. It's like, oh, I'm doing going this way but it's only one mirror right not, not three mirrors like a SLR so you, you're a bit lost sometimes so it takes a little time to get accustomed to right so TLR we had one mirror here right for this lens to go to the finder and this one was only for the taking the picture the taking lens one nice evolution from that was you guessed it to go from a TLR to a SLR. So a SLR is a single lens reflex. So instead of having one fixed mirror, we had a moving mirror, right? So you compose, now the mirror is down and the light goes through a micro prism, uh, prism. so actually you're not lost, you know? So you, you, you do all these movements and it's natural, you know? It's not gonna go the other way that you think it, it's it's much more better and when you press the button mirror goes up and the same lens is used for finding and for taking the so go like this of course the picture is not going to be good you know many companies you know different sizes of slrs and what did we had after that? Oh my God, I have to look at my notes. <laughs> Box cameras, views cameras, folding cameras, TLR, SLR, rangefinder. Oh yes, instant cameras. Who doesn't remember the nice Polaroid cameras? Those were amazing. Those were so fun. And they were using, sorry for the noise. They were using either a flash bar or you can add on some electronic flashes to it. Those were fun and Polaroid still in business. You know, it's not the same business, but it's still in business and are doing uh, through the uh, Impossible Project some films for that, but it's like five bucks a pop. That's a bit too crazy for me. I still did some, but you know, with the quality of Instax now, so why we have Instax? You know, Polaroid at some point, they wanted to get into the Japanese market and they couldn't. The uh, Japanese government said, no, uh, you should, you know, get the help from Fuji. It, it should be uh, manufacturers in Japan. So Fuji got in and they got the knowledge of how to do that. And now Polaroid is gone and Fuji still knows how to do them. And frankly, they're better than Polaroid used to be. So, yeah, Instax, that's great. What about, you know, special purpose cameras like... 3D cameras. Ooh, 3D existed long time ago since dagger types, probably even pinholes. I don't know, but I saw cameras from the 1800s with like dual lens, one lens for the left eye, one lens for the right eye. You know, it's logical. And there's so many ways of viewing these, uh, so many technologies. Now we have even point and shoes that are 3D. They're pretty fun. Uh, special purpose. <laughs> Panoramic cameras. Look at this beast. This is so fun. I think this is one of the best. Actually, it's one of my favorites. You know, the Noblex. It's a medium format electronic shutter control. Oh, yeah, baby. This is amazing. You can buy much cheaper ones like Horizon. And panoramic cameras, you have different uh, designs, right? You have fixed lens, wide angle for panoramic shot or you have like this one a revolving lens that has a much better perspective if you ask me other special purpose cameras spy cameras oh my god this is a great camera of course it's a really small film so it's not that great in terms of resolution frankly my phone is much better this is using eight millimeter uh, film which a really tiny uh, sensor size if you want it's a film uh, but everything is on there focus light meter manual control oh yeah i can do a another video about this one <laughs> another kind of really small camera 
the Mineta, the hit cameras popular in the 60s, these were using 17.5 millimeter film, which is exactly half the size of the 35 millimeter we know. Oh my god, this is not great. Uh, don't buy these. It's fun, but uh, as a novelty, that's it. But how cool is this? Oh my god, the, the sheer you know size of this little baby. This is a full SLR system with motor, with flash, you know, different lenses for it. This is so fun, and it used 110. Still works today, and. Speaking of which, these kind of cartridges, um, in the 80s, actually in the 70s, uh, Kodak wanted to make photography available for much more people than it was before. So, easy loading. That was a big step. It doesn't look like much, but when you were able to load a film as easy as I just did, Oh my god, many people could do pictures because 35 millimeter was quite of a hassle, you know, to load. But this, look at that, that's done. And you just have to... All right, toy cameras. Oh, there's a lot of toy cameras. Look behind me, there's Pop9, uh, Olga, Diana. So fun. And if you really think you do great pictures, you know, Try to do great pictures when, with some of these, you know, you gotta have fun, you know, actually, yeah, you will have fun. But next, view cameras. Uh, I present to you Berenice 2, my uh, view camera I made myself. So what is a view camera? A view camera is basically the same thing as any camera or as even this right so you have a lens in this case a panel so you have a lens here you have empty space right and you have a film in the back so view cameras you can do so much stuff with that like control your perspective you know you can use tilt shift uh, lenses but with these view cameras you have much more control over that all right so you can use film or digital. Speaking of which, digital cameras. Oh my God. In the early days, in the early days, is this still working? I hope so. Oh yes, still working. <laughs> you were able to take a picture, click, and then listen to this. Oh my God, it's writing to what? It's writing to SD card? No, there were no SD cards at that time. Compact flash? No. A floppy, can you imagine? Oh my god, 1.44 megabyte of a floppy could store like 15 pictures. Imagine the quality, not that great. Of course, uh, a few years after, you know, we had really, really nice, you know, point and shoots with a lot of options, even panoramic, panoramic stuff. After that, we had bridge cameras. They were a bit between the point and shoot and the big DSLRs there were a kind of trade-off mm, okay but so slow oh my god let's let's take a picture I take a picture oh yeah automatic mode uh, how can I get rid of that automatic mode I don't even remember it's oh my god the menus they were so bad let's just take it like this okay recording recording Okay, done. Okay, that's one shot. Not many buffer on that, not much buffer. After that, after the bridge, of course, the big, huge DSLRs that we have. Amazing tools. Got so many lenses, so many accessories. You do everything with these. These are great. Oh, great tools, right? I'm not going to even go further on that. Amazing. And what else? Mirrorless. Well... Mirrorless is getting pretty good now. Actually, they're kind of my go-to camera now. You know, traveling with one of these? Hmm, yeah. Traveling with one of these? Hmm, choice is easy. 
picture quality pretty darn good so that was my video showing you so many different types of cameras and in the future I'll make a lot of videos about each probably each of these cameras right and many more so uh, stay tuned uh, more is coming uh, thanks for watching please subscribe and may the photo be with you